good old mince pies. Mmm. Hang on. This isn't vegan. So we're saying goodbye to that and hello to vegan mince pies. So if you're a mince pie lover and you're vegan, I have just the recipe for you because we're going to be making our own vegan pie crust and I already have some shop-bought mince meat. So let's get started. Alright, so as I said, we're going to be making our homemade vegan pie crust and I'm going to be using the Ninja Foodie once again. This is not sponsored. <laughs> um, it's actually really handy, um, especially for baking. Um, so I'm going to be making the pie crust with some plain flour. So we're going to add that into here. Maybe, maybe there's a better way to do this. Hang on. I'm going to grab a spoon. Spoon. Got it. <laughs> so um, I'm also using gluten-free flour, um, but you don't have to. You can just use regular flour as long as it's vegan, of course. Vegan certified. And I'm also going to add in some sugar. as well as a pinch of salt and this is optional but I feel like it adds a really nice touch so you can add some cinnamon this is like a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon so it's a very small amount as well as some nutmeg now I'm going to close this I'm not gonna blend it just yet but I'm just going to like give it a little shake so that the dry ingredients can kind of like incorporate a little bit now i'm going to be adding some coconut oil um, and this is like solid um, and that's exactly how you want it because if you've ever made pastry before you'll know that um, cold ingredients are best because it helps the pastry to stay together um, you can also use vegan butter uh, but i chose to use coconut oil which means it won't have as much of that yellow tone that pastry usually has and that's not an issue at all uh, but if you do prefer that I guess you can either use the vegan butter or you can add some um, food coloring I really don't think it's necessary um, so I'm just gonna close this and I'm going to blend so of course I'm going to be using my Ninja Foodie because I love it uh, but if you don't have a blender or food processor of any type you can use the rubbing in method which is where you use your fingertips and you use butter so I would recommend using vegan butter if you if you don't have a processor um, and you basically break up the butter and you kind of like coat the flour so it does take a little bit more time but I think it's worth it still and it's a method that is usually used for scones so if you want to watch that video actually I'll link it down below um, but yeah what I'm going to be doing is using the pulse mode because I feel like I get a lot more control because you just want this to go to a fine breadcrumb consistency and then we're going to be adding some water later and that's when you'll want it to start coming together as a dough So at this point, I feel like it's a pretty good consistency. Um, as you can see, I feel like that's quite good. So I'm going to open this up. We'll worry about this later. But for now, I'm putting it far away from me because I do not want to cut myself with that. Ugh. Anyways, um, I feel like if you want... You can add some water to help it come together, but because the coconut oil is already kind of like, it does melt very easily, I personally don't feel like you need to. Um, 
So yeah, it is coming together quite nicely. So I won't be adding water, but if you feel like yours does need water, then that's totally fine as well. You can add some. Um, I would highly recommend going tablespoon by tablespoon to make sure you don't add too much because if you add a little bit, you can always add more, but once it's in, you can't really take it out. So I'm going to set this water aside since I don't need it. And I'm going to clean my surface and put some flour on it so I can start rolling these out. So here I have some parchment paper, which I am going to be using whoops, um, to wrap my dough. And I'm going to let this chill in the freezer for an hour. Um, if you can do this overnight, then that's even better. But honestly, it's not 100% necessary. So one hour in the freezer will do. So I have um, a bit of my batch of dough that is actually um, quite good. It's pliable. Um, however, I still have some that is like pretty much oops, rock hard. Um, so I'm going to leave that to cool. And now I'm going to use my flour and sprinkle this onto the surface. And this is the point where uh, you're going to want to roll it out to about, I don't know, like a one centimeter thickness. It doesn't have to be crazy thick, uh, but also don't make it too thin uh, because you just don't want that. So let's roll this. Okay, so I've gone for um, slightly less than one centimeter. And I'm going to use a cutter. So my one is actually scalloped, which um, is not an issue, but uh, if you don't want it scalloped, then that's fine. I feel like this is slightly uneven. There we go. Nice bit as well. Now I'll just take the dough from around it. And I'll show you what to do with these. Um, I'm just going to grab the little tins. So you can use like an actual mince pie tin, but I'm just going to use like the little cupcake ones. Now I'm going to pick these up and kind of like flatten them a bit and kind of just put it inside the tin like so. Um, and it smells really good and I'm going to use a little teaspoon to help me put this in so I'm going to give it a mix around first. Basically minced meat is just made of raisins, sultanas, um, it usually does have like a tiny bit of alcohol but this one doesn't from what I saw which is good <laughs> and I'm going to add some. And for the like top, you can like cut out a star with a cookie cutter or something, but I'm going to do uh, just the same kind of cutter with the scalloped edges and you can just place it on top like so. And if you want, you can pinch it at the edges, kind of like push it so it's sealed. And there you go. And then you're just going to repeat this process for the rest of them. So the rest of my dough has cooled down. I mean... <laughs> warmed up a little and now I'm going to break it so for the top I am using slightly smaller um, amount of pastry so I'm gonna like do like a kind of 40 60 percent kind of thing and this more like 80 20 but whatever um, and yeah I'm just gonna roll this out
As you guys can see, I tried a variety of things with the help of my dad as well. Um, he actually made this one, it's very cute. He also made this one, also very cute. Um, so yeah, I tried a lot of different things to see what would work. Honestly, if you want, you can just have them plain. If you have cookie cutters, that would be even better. I just don't have any that like fit the size of this because this is very small. I only have big ones. So um, I'm now going to put these in the oven for about 20 minutes and I'm going to have it set at 200 degrees Celsius. So let's get these in. I cannot wait to eat. Um, so now I'm going to try a mince pie. Um, the rest are still quite hot, so oh, I put this one to cool. So let's have a little go. Oh gosh, this is kind of stuck. Okay. What I want to do is cut it in the middle so you guys can see what it looks like. Oh, so far so good. Wow, that actually looks really, really nice. Let's try it. Mmm. Wow. The pastry actually has a really nice crunch to it. And honestly, I can't tell these are vegan. And I'm not just saying that, I promise you. They are so, so good. And also I did uh, add some demerara sugar on top just to add a little bit of extra sweetness and a bit more color as well. Guys, I hope you tried this recipe because it's so good. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a huge like and subscribe down below for more content like this. Merry Christmas.